Hello everybody, this is Ziggy Pixar here. So one question I get asked pretty commonly, both in and out of game, is what is my setup slash how do you play PSO on a controller? So today we're going to be taking a look at the in-game things that I have updated in order to do what I do without needing to use the keyboard. And we're going to be talking a little bit about an application that I happen to use for other games called Joy to Key as well as introducing a button mapper in case you do not have a third-party controller that allows up to 14 buttons of input. So this will be useful whether or not you have a PlayStation controller, Switch controller, Xbox controller. I've done this with all types of controllers. I've swapped as needed. So unfortunately, you do have to tweak things based off of which controller type you happen to be using. So I've included something on the far right to talk about my mappings. So that way, if I talk about button one, or if I say L3, you're able to kind of look on the right hand side of the screen and just look as needed so you can follow along. But let's start with PSO before we jump into Joy to Key. So we give a bit of context of what we're looking to do here. So one big thing that I'm looking to take advantage of that would not normally be able to be done from a GameCube or classic PSO standpoint is these back buttons, potentially with usage of the right stick, allow me to have more buttons than normal. So what do I mean by that? So if I were to hit, let's say, the bottom button currently, which mimics the uh, action palette within PSO, if I were to instead hold my back right button or my R2, what I can end up doing is I can now cast Gazond, which at this point is mapped to number seven on that. Or if I hold more than one button, so I'm holding L2, R2, A, I can suddenly do emotes on demand. I can suddenly pop up information like what is the party info? What is what is today's forecast? So I want to walk you through how this was done from the PSO side before we switch to the other applications. So let's give some context. So context number one, if you've never done this before, if you go into customize, if you're looking to update the palette as a reminder, when you're on the screen, you can hit enter on the keyboard if you want. And you could go forward, and if you type a number, whether on the controller or the keyboard, in this instance, I'm using the keyboard, you can assign it to zero to nine in a way that makes sense. Since everything for me is in groupings of four, so like I have two buffs, debuffs, I have four major spells, I have two supportive spells, a lot of them will be assigned to kind of consider that clockwise, like my right stick will cover buffs and debuffs, my face buttons will cover damage spells, and potentially what would be the equivalent of select and start will end up being my healing spells or something else. So just be aware that that is my philosophy. Please feel free to change the in-game numpad as you see fit. And if you want to update it when you hold control, just make sure that you're on this particular menu and you do the same thing. So these palettes do not have to be the same number. And I would recommend that you make them a little different because you give yourself access to a whole lot of things like soul atomizers on demand, which means you could get out of slow-mo from falls faster. You could avoid paralysis so you could retaliate quicker. You potentially have your traps so that way you can just instant use them as needed rather than fumbling through the menu. So anything that potentially reduces some menuing time with a simple button press is beneficial. Or if you're looking to quickly use things like the technique menu because you're looking to do uh, certain tech loops, this would allow you to use the controller in order to access that without needing the keyboard. And all of these things go towards improving your gameplay and or being a big quality of life change. Now, the other big component for why this also works is if we go ahead briefly and go to the chat options, if I look at the shortcut menu, uh, I'm able to basically assign quick Affinia commands, so your forecast, party info, things like bank and lobby, being able to switch between a character bank and a share bank on demand is excellent if you don't need to use the keyboard. Or if you want, for example, if we were to select one of these and I were to register, I can do autocomplete, so I could say hello, I could say goodbye as traditional greetings if I'm playing with a lot of random people. Or if I hit tab and I want to show off my emotes, cool. I now can do these things on demand with a simple combination of buttons without necessarily needing to menu, without needing to worry about character order. I set it once, I forget about it. It just, it feels good. 
So for example, just showcasing one thing here, I can switch between like the character bank and the, the share bank. There's sometimes a little delay depending on the command, but generally speaking, I can get some information that could be very helpful if I'm looking through different characters and just looking to see, for example, how many materials they've consumed, etc. So again, that's all down to personal preference. You can make that emotes, custom chat, and just to make sure that I showcase this. So if you do want chat in there, just hit the space bar to type, so I could type in whatever. If you don't like what you put in, just hit escape to stop it from setting. So that way you're able to go forward without any issues. Now, aside from that setup to get everything we saw along the bottom, there's a couple of things we need to do to prep for the joy to key. So if I look, for example, at keyboard controls, I leave it on. If I look at keyboard config, I'm playing with just the default one setting. I tried to make it as simple as possible when teaching this to other people so that people can use my uh, joy to key stuff a lot more straightforward. So I left it on default one. You can see there's nothing different in the customs between these. So if you are not planning to use the keyboard or maybe you customize it and aren't aware, if you hit default and hit confirm, you could override the setting to override the custom, which for me makes no difference. So I'm good to go there. So this is assuming default one controls. We're also gonna take a look at pad button config, and this is where it might be a little more complicated depending on what you have access to. So I'm gonna leave this up for a few moments as we talk about uh, the different things I've set and why I've changed them. So we have some of the typical X and Y access for moving, and that's fairly straightforward, but... Oh, also just to mention, POV usually refers to the D-pad. Where things have changed, are along these face buttons. My philosophy is I'm looking to free up the face buttons as much as I can, so that way I don't accidentally confirm, I don't accidentally attack while doing other things. And in order to do so, I'm accessing what would be considered button 13 and button 14. So these are ones where I don't want them to do anything. If I look at my mapping, I have uh, L2 and R2, which aren't really mapped, they, they, they aren't really detected by the game in the traditional sense. They take up another four buttons. And then in addition, for buttons 9 and 10, I assign the, uh, the right stick and the left stick. Doesn't matter which order it is to me, I don't use these buttons. The reason I want to do this is because if I hold in one of these back buttons, my intent is that I'll have four buttons, if you think up, right, down, left as a button combo, YB, YBAX, which is another 8, and then select start as 9 and 10. So I have 10 separate buttons, usually, depending on if I'm holding in the back button or, or the back right button or the back left button. So with that in mind, if you don't have a custom controller, let's change scenes and show you what you could potentially use in order to achieve what you're seeing on screen here. So let's go ahead and showcase one additional thing here. So I went, to, I went ahead and downloaded something known as the PSO button changer. Now this came from the Affinia forums and I will be linking it in the description below the video and giving proper credit to who did this. But the intent being is that if you do not have these buttons, according to the readme, what you're able to do is when you Go to select one of the buttons we saw in the control menu and it asks you to enter the button. You simply right click on that particular window and it'll run the button for you. And that's all you need to do. So if you don't have button 13, 14, don't worry. You can use these to emulate those buttons and go forward. Now, as a point of warning, don't try assigning them all to the same button. The game will not like it. Do not assign too many crazy things. Just keep it simple if you're looking to experiment on your own. Otherwise, you may run into some problems. So just make sure, for example, confirm and cancel is a button you could potentially reach if needed. Otherwise, you will probably be having a bad time. So let's close the button changer, which was downloaded from the Affinity Forum. And I'm going to go ahead and present the joy key here. Hello everybody, this is Future Ziggy here. So I wanted to touch upon one point before we go into the demo involving an Xbox One controller. So let's say you have a PlayStation controller, a Switch controller, or something else, uh, and you would like to follow along in terms of mappings. What I would recommend 
is once you have at least something on the screen, it doesn't have to have the right number of joysticks. Just make sure joystick one, if you touch the stick, if you press your buttons, you should see them light up. So that way you can convert to whatever your controller is using and translate it, I guess, compared to what's on the screen currently. I've done this across multiple controllers before. So if you do have multiple controllers, just make sure to make a copy of your profile and label it accordingly. And you can swap between them as needed. But regardless of whether or not you are using an Xbox controller on the PC, it does work. Just make sure to take note of things like the back triggers, which things that light up when you press those and things of those nature. You might need to slightly tweak it uh, to get the desired results. So I just wanted to put that point there and we're going to go back to past Ziggy. I like to have something called the ZZZ. This is my little hot tip for Joy to Key users. I have one where it's the all the defaults and the game is asleep. So for example, if I don't want to use PSO controls because I'm swapping between games or I have some added um, functionality like the left control stick doesn't work because it was like a PlayStation 1 game before that really existed in terms of compatibility. I just put it in ZZZ to say it's asleep. And then when I'm ready, I just switch back to the profile when I'm done. Now, if you want it to look like how we're seeing here, we're going to go through the options a little slower here. So you could configure the number of joysticks. The way I kind of view this is that just imagine you have different setups depending on which button you were holding, according to how I've set it up. So right now, only the back button, R2, and the back left button l2 currently set up for a different type of controller so i only need three joysticks here now if your controller has 14 buttons put 14 here otherwise you can leave it at 12. what i also recommend is you could test a little bit in joy to key if things seem a little off by clicking on the button mapping and playing around with it and also make sure if you're planning to use the control sticks, which is what I do in all the PSO controller gameplay, make sure the threshold for input is not too low or too high. Find where it, it reacts the way you want it to. So for my particular controller, I like putting it at around 30%. So if I just slightly tap it, or if the controller is not 100% dead centered, like it's just slightly off angle, it's not gonna input stuff when I don't need it to. So let's go ahead and jump into the first default control. So we have Wands movement on the stick. Some of that is for movement, just in case on my controller. A lot of it actually is for me auto inputting uh, random letters when I'm playing single player games. So I don't need to type in the game name or the password. I literally just roll the stick and it makes a Wands -a 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 game in the lobby. Uh, the rest of the face buttons, so buttons one through four, but not necessarily in the order you would think due to Xbox One, which is what I'm using now, not being in an order that necessarily makes sense to me. Essentially, I'm just mimicking the action palette. So you have your enter, your escape, your left, your end, and that does everything you need it to do. Now, a lot of these buttons can be left blank because they were working as is within the PSO controller config we took a look at earlier. However, we have a little bit of customization here. So if I were to go ahead and hit select here, for example, I have a personal preference that I want to be able to quickly enter the technique menu, which is what F3 is. So for example, if I'm using Gazond, uh, repeatedly on Volt Op in single player play and I have my Excalibur equipped for massive ATP because Volt Op works that way for some reason. Uh, great, now I could just do this and I don't need to worry about anything else. I can also simulate opening the menu by using F12, which is why this is used here. Otherwise, most of my other buttons are basically untouched, at least on the default control. Now, let's go one at a time. I'm going to say what happens when we hold R2 or the back right button. So let's move to the second joystick. So as long as you hold it in, it's going to move here. So let's briefly show you how you would do this. So if I right click and hit edit assignment or double click, what will happen is that I will get. No, that's not what I want. I will get there we go. That's what I want. I will get a little pop up that will tell me about the types of emulation that I'm looking to achieve. So we can see by default it highlighted yellow here. Let's say I wanted uh, the letter Y to be it. Just press the Y on your keyboard. Great. If I hit OK, it'll accept it here. And now button 10 is Y. I'm going to clear this. I can right click and clear, which is what I just did there in order to get rid of it. Or if I'm looking to set up the joystick specifically, if I were to click on this little special over here, 
You have two options in how you can handle swapping between controller profiles, I guess the best way to describe it. So if I hold, for example, R2, I could switch it to one different profile, otherwise it goes to the other. Now, separately, on the left-hand side, which we can't see at the moment because of the window's in the way, if I were to make something like PSO controls 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, in theory, you could set it up with the load and switch to another configuration to as long as you keep tapping right, it rotates through one additional set. And if you hit left, it rotates back to a previous set. And you can technically just keep adding more and more and more and more and more and more and more. Personally, I think that gets a little messy. Maybe it works for you. For me, I know it didn't. I'd rather have all my controls in one particular profile and it's going to be specific to that controller. So I don't have to worry if I swap controls. I just copy an old format. And if I'm using, for example, switch controller instead of Xbox one, I just make the adjustments in that profile rather than worrying about all the different configurations. So for me, it's just easier if it's contained. Again, that's a preference. I choose to leave everything on uh, no delay because I want it to be instantaneous. And I will denote, though, if you were curious about a long time ago, I no longer do this. I no longer turbo gamble on stream. But for those that were curious, if you're looking to set up a turbo gamble for your games, equivalency, again, make sure to check Affinius fair use because they do not like you doing multi input. So we won't be going into detail there today. But let's say you need to turbo fire something for a different game and you're looking to take advantage of it. Just know that auto repeat and either at most I think it could go at most about 30 times you can make it I think technically 30 times a second so if I were to do 30 here that's as fast as it could go PSO has a weird limitation where it's actually faster to do it every 15 or 16 because the game actually can't take that many inputs where it's literally off on off on off on every frame for 60 frames uh, so just be careful just play around with whatever makes sense for the game you happen to be playing in what I would recommend is if you're looking to use it from a casual sense, you could put a delay in milliseconds, for example. So I could put 7,000 seconds, or not 7,000 seconds, 7,000 milliseconds, or like 2,500 milliseconds to say, if I hold a button for two and a half seconds, it will start rapid firing. This could be useful if you want to do like quick menus and then you just tap confirm. And if you don't want to be holding the button for eternity, you could do toggle on, toggle off. We're not going to be setting that up in our control today, nor do I use it today. But for those that were curious, I will put that in there. But I highly advise you look at what is recommended practice from Affinia before you dive into it. Because the policy could change. The policy has changed in the past. Just be careful with it. So we're going to keep it real simple. So we're going to go ahead and we've already set up the shift function on one of the other keys. So if I hit, for example, R2, which is what we're going to focus on next, it will move me over to Joystick 2. Hello again, this is Ziggy Pixar from the future. So I wanted to take another shot at this demo since I was going back and forth a little bit as I was recording this. So I want to clarify one thing. I'm going to walk through the philosophy behind the Joystick 2 and Joystick 3. So therefore, regardless if you have the same controller or you have different preferences, for why the buttons are like this. I want to take a little extra time going through the different mappings so you can adjust them as needed as we walk through uh, these particular setups. So from the standpoint of going from joystick one to joystick two, if I hold in the right trigger, everything you see here currently in joystick two will be enabled. What is the purpose of joystick two? So the purpose of joystick two is along the bottom in PSO, we have that uh, customizable toolbar of zero to nine. And I would like across all characters potentially to be able to use their items, their traps, etc., without fear of lockout, without fear of accidentally donating during mag blasts, being at 100% synchro, etc. So the way I like to visualize things is kind of like a clock. So most of the things will go in a very standard clock formation. So if I touch the right stick while holding the back right trigger and I hit up, that's going to be one. If I go right, it's two. If I hold down, it's three. If I go left, it's four. Similarly, if we go with the face buttons in a clockwise direction, starting with five, since we just did one to four, Y would be five, six would be B, seven would be uh, A, and X would be eight. So that covers at least the first eight. And then 
to finish off counting to nine slash zero, if I'm holding the back right trigger and I hit select, I have that as nine. And if I hit start, it counts as zero. So with that, I've mapped the entire toolbar at the bottom. Now I want you to keep in mind, it is actually really important the order you hold down the triggers. So to give an example on the screen, I have button 11, which is my left trigger, give me a different command. So that means if I were to hold the right trigger first and then press the left trigger, I can actually get a completely separate action than if I had done it in the opposite order. Now I'm doing this more for muscle memory. I've swapped this in and out with uh, different function menus. Like sometimes it'll be mag, sometimes it'll be equipment. So I think right now it's F2 for equipment. So from that standpoint, I want to be able to just quickly access certain things. And for me, it's more of a comfort thing rather than like a logic thing for that side button. But just be aware that if it's a very important combination and you may or may not fumble pressing which trigger you do first, I probably would not rely on having major functionality there. It's more of a nice to have unless you're feeling very clean with your inputs. Now, I want to draw attention to a couple other things, too. So you might notice that there's no mappings on what would be my left and right shoulder buttons. The reason I do that is because if I'm holding the right shoulder button, as per the setup in PSO, that is the control panel toggle. So I want to be able to do zero to nine with the control, without the control. So I don't want to put any of the numbers here because that'll lock me out. And similarly, if I'm doing this, I want to make sure that I'm not accidentally doing added functionality since I'm going to potentially be needing to do this often to toggle whether or not I want nine or zero in one panel versus another. So that's why I don't put anything there. Similarly, the left left button or L1 doesn't have anything in there because it's my camera. I did for the longest time put Resta there and it drove me wild. So what would happen is that if I were to hit the back right trigger in L1, just a quick heal, like I'll do a quick tap, what'll happen is that my character will turn to rotate to heal other players, which is absolutely horrendous because I want my facing to be a very specific way and potentially facing sideways or backwards when you're fighting a boss that potentially requires you to use techniques to do additional damage, like the invulnerability phases of uh, Dark Falls, or even potentially uh, a lot of the episode four phases when working in multiplayer groups. Turning away from the boss and needing time to reorient to then do your other techniques is really not ideal. So I've moved away from that. I've moved them to the select and start since nothing really overlaps with it anymore. And that leads to quicker inputs and cleaner inputs. Now from my standpoint, uh, I do have the control stick map the equivalency of the WASD movement. I don't necessarily need that from a movement standpoint. I had heard a long time ago, and I have not verified if this is true, that if you have like control stick movements mixed with keyboard movements in order to shake out, you shake out of freeze faster. I will generally say from my observation, it feels like I get out of freeze pretty quickly. But the thing I mostly use it for, whether or not that's true, I've never actually explored through. But regardless if that's true, what I like to use it for is actually naming my games. So more often than not, when I'm playing single player, I literally just spin the stick and it creates a game name for me. So if you see like all sorts of gibberish involving WASD in block two, it's probably me. <laughs> it's, it's like there's like a 90, 95% chance it's me going in a non streamed game. So just be aware. That's why I have it set up like that. Um, you could, in theory, map things to the L3 and R3 buttons, but again, those are things I couldn't quite clean up with what we have today for a clean menu. So more often than not, both of these will end up popping up the uh, main menu. So if you do want to go back and adjust with the thought that you don't mind pressing L3 or R3 to hit the equivalency of the F12 menu or your main menu, then by all means, that potentially frees up the start button on a few other screens. Me personally, I, I would never want to open a menu that way, so I just leave it as is and I don't use those buttons for basically anything. Similarly, I don't really want to mess around with things on the D-pad. So my D-pad is usually clean 
across all my testing variations. The reason being is that often I could be swapping between doing a quick spell, like let's say I'm doing, you know, um, number pad four, number pad five, because I'm like chaining like foeys or something else. And then I realize, oh, I'm out of, I'm out of fluids and I don't have that mapped necessarily on every character where I'm like, oh, I need to, I need to access my moons or something that may or may not be on my quick draw menu. If I have to menu and I happen to be casting a spell at the same time, I do not want that. I do not want any of those D-pad inputs to act as an input for menus or anything else, since potentially I could be swapping very rapidly between uh, quick menus or swapping weapons, or I could be swapping weapons and then immediately using spells. So I would rather it just be clean, simple, and not have to worry about it, so I just don't map anything there. In theory, you could put stuff there. I also just generally don't recommend it. So let's now go to Joystick 3. So to access Joystick 3 from a play standpoint, my back left trigger will then access Joystick 3. So let's go here as an example. So very similar to Joystick 2, uh, my right stick, instead of up, right down left on the right stick being one two three four up on the right stick is f1 then it goes to f2 f3 f4 in a clockwise motion same with joystick two my y starts as f5 then when we go in a clockwise fashion y b a x it goes f5 f6 f7 f8 so that covers a lot of the functionalities there and to, to wrap it up, to kind of tie it in very similar to how I did Joystick 2, uh, select and start are F9 and F10 in place of 0. So the numbers are the same. I don't have to think about it. I like that just because of the fact that I don't want to second guess myself if I did it in like a kooky order. It makes sense to me. If it doesn't make sense to you, change the order a little bit. But I highly recommend you take advantage of the right stick along with the face buttons to hit a majority of those F functions. Now. Similarly, we have a couple things that could be updated. So similar to this one, I put the equivalency of WASD. I don't really care what the inputs are because I'm spinning the stick half the time to create the game. But where there is a little bit of a difference is if I hold the back left trigger and hit the back right trigger, this will actually activate shift. So the back right trigger, when left, last left back trigger is hit first, will basically double the number of inputs I have. So if I were to hit just, for example, holding my L2 button and hitting up, right, down, or left, I would get F1 to F4. But if I do that while holding the right trigger, I get Shift F1, Shift F2, Shift F3, Shift F4. And that allows me to basically use not only those quick menus as intended on the keyboard, uh, along the top for your mags, your techniques, etc., but then it also becomes your ability to do your quick chat commands. So again, it's all this. I no longer have to think about it. The numbers make sense in my head. Change it as you feel as you feel fit to do. I would say that this control probably also has a couple things you can update. So for example, if I hit the back left trigger and the left button, I do have it do one specific button that I don't do in Joystick 2, and that is the tab button. The reason being that uh, there are some scenarios where I do tab or need to fix a tab input by accident. So for example, if I'm in the lobby and I want to see a combination of player name, level, and clan or rotate through them quickly, I do want to be able to press that sometimes because sometimes I am curious when I'm in the lobby. Uh, but what I end up using it more for specifically where the camera is not necessarily an issue is to make sure that if I need to move the techniques in my technique window, so if you recall, if you were to activate the quick techniques in PSO to switch between, let's say, using your items, equipping your weapons, and doing your techniques, that's where being able to use tab to rearrange the order of things like Foey, Barda, and Zond into things that need to be quick cast, like you want Gazond at your top, you want... Uh, potentially Rafoe at the bottom of the list, so you just do quick menu and hit up and then confirm to loop it. The ability to rearrange that on my characters is somewhat important, and again, it's kind of like, it's still very much a work in progress for me, even though I've played for a while, because I just decide something doesn't work for me, or I just don't like the speed at which the inputs are coming out. Uh, being able to change that to me is really key, and to, go, and to coincide with it, 
because I don't need the control for any of these, because I'm not using 0 to 9, these are all menus, so generally it won't really matter if I'm doing this. Uh, my right button happens to be Enter, so that way I can just hold the back left trigger, tap things that I want to tab to reselect, and I also can then hit the right to confirm and enter it there. So I definitely recommend uh, kind of playing around with it and seeing what makes sense for you. Again, by default, to enter the quick menu, that'll involve uh, hitting, I believe, the R button plus Y, I think would be with R. Yeah, that should be the setup in order to access the quick menu, since by default, if you were to just hit Y, that would enter your quick chat. So if you want to emote or do anything else like that, Joystick 1 covers that. But that R1 plus Y will enter that little quick menu. And, and due to our setup, if you tap Y, or not tap Y, if you tap R1 repeatedly or the right shoulder button, you'll rotate through the different menu types. So again, just practice accessing those things and see if it makes sense for Joystick 2 and Joystick 3. Because a lot of it is my personal preference. Like I like to use menu, I like to menu and do certain things with my right hand. And I think certain things make more sense with my left hand. My numbers start with the right stick, but maybe you would want to start YBAX with one, two, three, four, how I did it clockwise, or maybe you like counterclockwise, and you want, for example, you know, the right stick to be F5 to F8. Whatever makes sense to you, definitely rearrange it. But hopefully this is enough information for you to kind of take a look at a combination of the controls, listen to how we did the inputs there, and hopefully visually see uh, both the Xbox One mappings, some conversions if we're talking about like PlayStation, etc. Because uh, again, I flip between the PlayStation lingo and Xbox all the time because I grew up with PlayStation, not Xbox. But from that standpoint too, the Joy to Key is available for you to kind of take a look at. So the only other thing I have to say to add to Joystick 3 before we move back to Passiggy is that specifically other than hitting the L2, R2 equivalency to activate shift to go through those things. I did leave confirm and cancel as my A and B buttons since I am more likely than not to actually require a confirmation on menus. So while in Joystick 2, I actually don't have that because I don't care about confirming things. I generally shouldn't be menuing with it. From my perspective, if I'm going in and I'm holding the left trigger and I'm looking to quick swap my equipment because I flicked right on the control stick, for example, I want to make sure that I'm able to swap that in case I'm still holding L2. So from a safety perspective, because I don't trust myself fully to let go, or there might be a small delay on that kind of thing, I left confirm and cancel on the A and B buttons, which would be enter by default uh, for confirm and escape for cancel. Again, you can modify that if you want to be like F11, F12. Honestly, I don't use that many quick uh, chat shortcuts. And even for the purpose of the demo, I added way more than I've ever used prior to this point in the streams. Uh, but there are definitely some buttons you could override here very, very easily if you want to get that functionality there. Uh, I would just be very careful specifically with uh, F11 in particular, because that one will toggle on the ability to type in chat. And that means, for example, right now we have WASD equivalency mapped to the control stick, and not in a way that really matters. It's just, honestly, it could be almost any random key. Uh, but from that standpoint, whenever I move, instead of moving, it'll actually try typing. So just be aware of that. F11 is probably the key to avoid. And even in general, I still have a bad habit of using that over double tapping space to type in PSO. So don't do what I do with that. D probably be very careful with what F11 is and make sure you can toggle it or cancel it very quickly, which would involve potentially hitting confirm to send it and then also F11 again to cancel. And yeah. I, I think from that standpoint, if you wanted to reuse like F12, which is by default a menu, maybe it would make sense if you want to replace it with something else. But for me, I think 10 shortcut keys are good enough for this year. Maybe I'll revisit it in the future. But I think that's a problem for even further in the future, Ziggy, to deal with. So we're going to go back to the main video and we're going to go ahead and wrap things up with past Ziggy. So now that we're done with the demo, I thought I'd tie everything back together with a little bit of a character showcase, quote unquote, of the numbers along the bottom and explain the philosophy behind it and why I go back and forth and touch things all the time uh, to my heart's content as we play PSO. 
So I want to start with the core ones that will almost never ever change across any human or Newman character. And that will be our buffs, debuffs, and healing. So the way I like to view it is that no matter what character I have, 90% of the time I will want the same set of things. So if I hold, for example, that right trigger and I hit up, I make that my first buff is Shifta, the second buff is Defense. Then my mind goes, what would be the opposite of that on the control stick? What would be the opposite of a buff? Well, the answer is a debuff. So my 1 to 4 are maps so that up and down, up would be attack up, down would be attack down, right would be defense up, left would be defense down. And skipping ahead a little bit in the numbers, we have Resta, which I want to be consistent across all my characters where they have Resta. I want Select and Start to be Resta and Anti. Um, in that order, all the time, that will basically never change, no matter what I do with the rest of the character. Now, where I go a lot back and forth are the four face buttons on your standard 0 to 9 or 1 to 0, however you want to call it, the customizable toolbar along the bottom. So that 5, 6, 7, 8, I tend to flip numbers a little bit in Joy to Key, or I flip numbers in the toolbar. The way I like to usually view it, and the way I have it set up currently as we see it, is that my top button, the Y button, that opens the quick menu, I view as button 5. Otherwise, I can view potentially 6, 7, 8 as either um, left, down, right, or I can view it as right, down, left. So generally speaking, uh, number 7 will not really change often because it is opposite of 5. So you'll see that that's pretty consistent across most of my characters. However, where I go a, a lot back and forth is the philosophy on whether or not I should flip in Joy to Key, the X, which is the left face button, and the right face button. Most of it comes down to aesthetics. It's all personal choice. I think in the current setup that we are looking at now, Yes, it looks like I flipped them for the purposes of demoing an alternative or talking about things you may or may not want to touch. So, for example, if I hold this right trigger and I hit triangle, I'm going to shoot the foe. If I hit left, that can either be my gifoe, or if I'm flipping it to read how we're talking about clockwise, it could be barda. Now, I'm not sure which I prefer, and you'll see me go back and forth between this a lot, uh, all the time. The way I like to kind of view it is when I customize it, I always like to keep it in technique order. Like if it's fire, lightning, ice, I will assign the buttons that way or the toolbar that way or both. Depending on whatever I think makes sense to me in the moment. So for the moment, I've decided I don't have a Grants. I don't have a Megid. I don't have a special technique I really need to assign to my top button. So for a Hunter or a Ranger, uh, especially the female characters, that's generally going to be my Foey button. Otherwise, the way I like to view it is if you hold control, those fire, lightning, and ice buttons should upgrade. So what do I mean by that? So by default, I have Gafoey, Gazond, and Barda on this particular character. If I hold control, it becomes Rafoey, Razond, and Rabarda. The reason being is that if I'm using ice and I realize, oh, I need a stronger ice, I just hold control to flip over to that ice technique. And that's how I kind of remember a little bit what these other buttons do. And again, that is probably the most subjective part of the build. Take it with a grain of salt if you like going five, six, seven, eight from clockwise or counterclockwise, whatever helps you memorize it better, please make those adjustments, do whatever you need to do. In this sample, we did counterclockwise but we can easily flip it to clockwise, uh, whatever makes sense. I will still probably leave the F keys the way they are because that's how I think of the numbers. I just think from the standpoint of the controls here, I like how pretty it looks, quote unquote, and I think it makes more sense to me from a, a visual standpoint what those buttons do. But again, subject to change. Now, one thing that tends to change the most when I hit control, not so much my healing options. Maybe you'll see me sub out, for example, anti at my end of the list when I'm holding control with the equivalency of a Ryuker or a Reverser, uh, depending on my mood. Sometimes I'll leave it as anti, sometimes I don't. Again, it's just another free slot. For me, I like Resta there no matter what, because if, if I want Resta, I always want Resta. If my fingers mess up, I forget, I forget I'm holding control. I'm like, no, 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 no. I need that Resta there. 
it needs to be there. Where there's a bit of a change is probably the first four buttons here. Now, because I play a cast, force, hunter, everything, I like some... something synchronized across all the characters. So the way I view it is if I'm panicking, I usually hit up on the right stick first. It's just a personal habit. I've just noticed it. So I will tend to put something like a big heal there. It could be a trimate or a star atomizer. If I hit right on the right stick, uh, when I'm holding control, so for example, if I'm holding the back right trigger, R1, and hitting the right stick, I'm going to be using Soul Atomizer across all the characters. The reason I think Soul Atomizer is a must-have, pretty much no matter what character you are, is because this is the item that you will lose probably the most time if you do not have very fast menuing to it. So in my scenario, I don't care if in my quick menu when I hit that R1 triangle concept, regardless if I'm on foey or weapon last or item last or I've ran out of healing items or I forgot to sort my order of the soul atomizer, etc. Rather than dealing with all that and potentially being stuck paralyzed or poisoned or slowed, I could just instantly just flick the stick and be done with it. So that means I can have more control. I'm not focusing on the bottom left corner of the screen. I'm able to dodge incoming attacks. This is important for things like Falls, who commonly uh, slows people. And if you don't have Cure Slow, you're missing out potentially a lot of attacks and also the ability to dodge the laser follow-up by holding a uh, like forward or backwards, for example, to dodge the lasers in single player. There's just so many things that could go wrong if you remain paralyzed for a long period of time. Lilies and Ultimate in particular with paralysis are super brutal for humans and humans. So you walking around trying to like D-pad and like fumble your way through here is a really great way to get yourself killed and a really great way of losing a lot of time in DPS on very common scenarios within the game. So that to me is probably one of the most important button mappings only followed by I have down as an alternate healing. Now, technically, up or down, I can make them tri fluids, die fluids. I can make them tri mates, die mates. I can make them stars, tri mates. Generally, they're going to be healing whatever I consider my core stat at the time, and I don't mind menuing for the other items if I need them. Usually not. But left. If I hit left opposite of the soul atomizer, I have my moon atomizers. This means I can be doing attacks. Notice somebody is downed. And I can hold my button and just flick the left stick and move on. So that way, if I'm not within range, I can keep walking forward and mash it until I'm within range. Or I can do some techniques in between if I'm slowly making my way towards another player, like I need to resta and I need to approach more methodically because I'm trying to dodge some massive AoE or something like that. Whatever the reason being, I just like Moon Atomizers as a quick flick. I will, I will warn you though, for people that have not done that before, if you do mash the Moon Atomizer button versus just like tapping every now and then, it will potentially consume more than one Moon Atomizer to revive, which really sucks. But being able to do it rather than go through here, hit the menu, realize you're not in range, and then menu again, it's still a much better alternative than doing that. One other thing that you have to kind of think about with the controls as well, is that the less that you swap between this menu, the more consistent it will be. So what do I mean by that? So for every item that you would normally go through, let's say your item menu to use, if you are also using this to swap between weapons and you cancel this menu and your next needed use is a heal, you have to remember in the back of your head to either always put it in the last menu that you are most comfortable with. Like, so by default, it's an item menu. And if you leave it on weapon, maybe move it back to item menu. So you either have to think about that every time or move those particular healing items to your toolbar. So that way, whatever your last menu was is consistent. So whether it could be rapid casting foey because you're looking to I don't know, just see how fast you could go with that particular speed. If you're trying to do Rafoe, for example, and you have the menu set up properly, so you've been using that tab alternative we talked about before to put the slower spells lower and the faster spells higher, then you could just leave it like this for the whole mission. And if you need to try fluid, it's as simple as hitting control and maybe something on the right stick. This is a lifesaver for not messing up your inputs and making sure that you have kind of a cleaner gameplay flow. Now, I do recommend that you use 
some of the other equipment menus. So for example, if I hit um, R2 here and were to hit, it's not quite what I wanted. R2, excuse me, and L2 in one of our options or R2 and down while holding the menu. Let me do it this way, actually. I can answer, <laughs> I, I changed my mind midway through input, but if I hit the left trigger and hit down, for example, I have access to the technique menu. If I just hit select by itself, I can access the technique menu. So I build in some redundancies because some of it is muscle memory slash I'm so used to hitting like start or select for a menu that I am just going to do that without thinking about it, even though I have better ways to do it. So just make sure where I have some redundancy where it makes sense, you could swap out some of those buttons as needed. Uh, but just make sure too that from the standpoint of going through and testing these things, I highly recommend being able to very quickly get into the equipment menu, especially if you're a force user. So as a hunter, I'm generally not going to swap my shield too often, if at all, but forces need to be able to change their merges rapid fire. And being able to not have to do this repeatedly over and over every time you want a menu here and then cancel out or do like this equivalency, rather than worrying about how many times you're hitting the d-pad it's just so much faster to just flick it once and then you'd be in the right menu and every time you use this menu for example to change your equipment if you've been leaving it on the items for recovery as well this means that if you're more used to swapping this way then you don't have to worry about being in the wrong menu with that other quick menu alternative where you're in here so you can leave this as techniques you can make this your equipment and you have your toolbar for example for your healing whether it's hp or tp so these are all things that i think about i constantly touch them i constantly tweak them my controls whether or not they open a menu is based off of what do i feel my fingers are doing <laughs> like literally that's how i decide the controls most of the time so sometimes things are there sometimes things are disabled i see how it works from the standpoint of what i like I do recommend being able to reach the technique menu rather than potentially going through and doing this and doing all this. Like being able to press a simple button to uh, potentially foey falls, for example, or being able to stack a foey efficiently without having any gaps. So like if I just mash confirm here, this is like fast as possible gafoey. So that way I do as much DPS as possible. And yes, it does make a big difference if you do this over the standard means of casting. Being able to swap on demand which one feels comfortable versus which one is uh, more frame efficient is kind of on a both experience level and also somewhat personal preference. So for example, if I'm trying to stun lock Volt Op, I will generally try to open the technique menu always for Gazond. When I'm casually playing with people, I don't always open the menu for Gafoe. Just be aware that if you're getting hit, it can result in potentially your technique being canceled. So if I were struck here, even though this is confirmed and it's being buffered, you can see how it lights up green for a while, it will cancel it when I get struck. So unless I'm also still hitting it to reconfirm, just note there are times where the technique can drop. So sometimes I feel it's better just to kind of mash it a couple of times if I think I'm going to get hit out and it'll eat one of the inputs. Otherwise, you'll see me go towards some of these menus for the rapid fires, which is another way of buffering where you'll see me go in the technique menu, depending on what boss or scenario I'm in. And again, some of that will come with practice, some of it will come with learning the advantages and disadvantages of both of those through player experience. I think I covered basically everything on the standard controls that I wanted to touch here um, when it comes to the Hunters, Rangers, and Forces. Again, the only really big difference between them is I might map Bowie to Grant slash Megid, depending on the character. Sometimes I wouldn't even put Megid on at all, unless I know I'm going to be doing something in Episode 2, because it's generally pretty useless. Whereas Foey, I'll be using in Dark Falls fights, or maybe the Spinners uh, to deal with the Episode 4 bosses, if that happens to be their weakness, and I'm sniping the weak, the, like the red one that gives you the most time to defeat the boss. Things of that nature. You know, I'll rearrange the buttons as needed, the core four, that five to eight. But generally speaking, the list is pretty static across every other character. Now, if I don't have debuffs, or I don't have buffs, you could alternatively put uh, consumable items there. But from a preference of, I play all these different characters, I generally don't like to mix where my healing is. I like it to be consistent, so that way if I have a muscle memory of playing for 50 hours across three characters, I'm going to know that I'm going to be mashing that up stick to try mate pretty much no matter who it is, because I know that's going to be my healing option. 
So just keep that in mind too, that even though you can map all these for your character, sometimes it might not be the best from the standpoint of consistency across multiple characters. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we're going to go ahead and quit game and actually, you know what? I'll, I'll show the lobby command briefly with the left trigger, right trigger start, and then we're going to quit game. And we're going to showcase like a setup that I use on most of my casts. Now, unlike the Hunters and Rangers, where they have to worry about potentially some uh, techniques like Rebarda to stop Del Saber from necessarily ambushing me in single player, or maybe that's my spell, spell of choice for damage when playing multiplayer as forces, rather than worrying about any of that, the cast is pretty simple. I give up a lot of monofluid type items, and I give up a lot of recovery items in order to focus on four key healing items, a revive, uh, telepipes, and traps. They're not super complicated, so we're going to go ahead and just create a game showcasing our input here. And what we're going to do is we're immediately going to go into the forest to showcase the commands. And that'll show that this character is, generally speaking, going to be a lot more simple. Again, this is me rolling on the control stick there. They're generally going to be a lot more simple than the hunters or rangers that I have, which will be like 90% the same across whether it's a Newman or a human. The cast, however, look very different as we're about to see here. So from the standpoint of the cast, what do I care about most? I put them in the order more or less that I think makes sense to me. So my right stick up while holding the uh, back right trigger, up would be fire, right would be freeze, down would be confuse. So I have all my traps on demand no matter what happens with the mag blast so I don't get logged out, I don't accidentally donate when I'm trying to quick menu, which is another side effect that people don't normally talk about. When you hit control and you go to hit the top button here, or in my case it's Y, that will end up donating if somebody else accidentally mag blasts, and that will also stop you from being able to heal. So I have seen people die to this. It's a lot more common than you think, especially when people play with the controller setup without using something like Joy to Key to remove emphasis on the control panel. And that's kind of another thing I'm talking about here. I would say is regardless if I'm like a force or not, um, I put some like backup healing commands as redundancy on the control, but never do I ever make it the only way for me to access something. So I might put some like lesser use spells here, like Zond or maybe Barda in some scenarios on the forces where if I don't have them, it's not necessarily game ruining for the character. Um, but if that is my only means of doing ice damage or my only means of doing healing, I will have considered it a failure of mapping. Because again, I could hit 100 synchro, somebody else could hit synchro and I might accidentally donate or something weird. Listen, I don't want to deal with it. So when I play, I pretty much ignore the bottom right, except for the landing page where it's almost always normal heavy special. So another reason why I also tend to put heavy as my middle button is that for the most part on higher difficulty multiplayer, I normally go normal heavy special. So that means that if I happen to be standing near Meseta or a ton of items that I'm near, if I need to quickly attack an enemy, and I, for example, do a couple normals and a heavy, I don't accidentally start picking up items rather than comboing. So definitely think about what your combo starter is. Not, I will almost guarantee if you're a new player, it's going to be normal. And make sure that is not your bottom button. Because you are potentially, for example, like let's say the enemy's about to hit me and I'm like, oh, let me shoot. Oh, oops, I picked up and didn't fire. So you now just took a hit in the face because you didn't map the control palette correctly because it'll always emphasize the items over the other choices. And again, maybe you'll decide as a cast, you have a ton of buttons that basically don't get mapped. Maybe you'll assign 890 or some weird combination along the bottom. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll assign, not weird combination, maybe you'll map like seven or six, seven, eight in your control panel to always be your attacks. So that way, if you do need to start with heavy attack pretty often, especially as you get more and more accurate weapons, you have a means of starting the combo there without necessarily picking anything up. Like these are the things you have to think about, test, see if it works the way that you'd like and kind of move forward with it. But anyway, tangent, <laughs> we talked a little bit about the traps with the uh, right stick. So we covered uh, fire, freeze, confuse. If you hit left on the control stick, I usually make that my panic item, so it depends on if I'm playing the character more single player or multiplayer. My panic item will generally be something like 
Star Atomizer with more experienced players, Trimate if I'm playing single player, or Moon Atomizer if I'm playing multiplayer. But whenever I hit control, the left on if I hit left on the right stick, that will always be Moon Atomizer. If I hit right on that, it will always be Soul Atomizer. So some things basically never change across the different characters. So in this example, if I mash up on the right stick, I hit Trimate. If I hit down, I have more controlled Dimates. Um, I could map Monomate, but as a personal preference, I basically try not to use those. The only reason I even have it mapped at all is in case I accidentally pick one up so I can consume it, so I can hold more items, and that's it. I don't usually have that in my intended rotation, but I will sometimes put Star Atomizer into my intended rotation. And again, it just depends on what kind of items are you bringing in as your cast, what are you more likely to afford, what makes more sense to you to spam, versus do you even care if you're at the end of the game and have millions and millions of Masetta. So these are things you have to kind of think about and that'll kind of shape your controls and whether or not you like things being done a certain way. But I hope this covered a good basis of why I've mapped things certain ways and I showcased uh, the flip controls there to showcase why you might want to go clockwise versus counterclockwise on the face buttons. As I know for me, that's something I go back and forth on fairly often and most of the time it's aesthetics or I get myself confused one way and I flip it because my brain says that suddenly makes more sense to me. But hopefully this gave you at least a template to work with and hopefully this will allow you to use all your quick commands whether you're just doing something simple like going through and trying to share guild information or you're trying to make sure to say hello or something like that that you're able to do those things without feeling that you are bound to the keyboard and hopefully this will at least allow you to play a single player experience without really ever touching the keyboard start to finish a pso and outside of maybe naming game specific things and putting a password in uh this should enable you to basically do everything that you could do on the keyboard so for people that love the joystick like i do and prefer to play that way i hope this kind was very helpful to you and i hope that this will inspire you to kind of tweak and update it as you see fit regardless if you have an xbox controller switch ps3 ps4 whatever it is hopefully it'll work for you but i think now we're at the end of our guide so i'd like to say thank you for watching to this point and hope to see you again in the next guide